creaky chair, creaky chair. Bom. I don't know if I, I'm, I don't know if I'm actually live yet, so I have to wait for my screen to start. So, um, which is now. Okay. Uh, can you hear me all right? Just let me know. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the sound test room. Today, we are going to take a look at Core Gadget for, for absolute, absolute, absolute beginners. <laughs> if you've never used Gadget, or if you're confused by Gadget, some people are are confused by Gadget. Someone can just let me know that they can hear me. That, yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Joe. Top job, cool beans. Uh, hi to everyone who's here on the chat feed. Uh, I will be not paying so much attention to what's going on in the chat, but will be more or less concentrating on what's going on in Gadget. When you first get Gadget and you open it up, you'll probably be presented with a, a demo project like this. Okay, so the first thing we want to be doing is tapping on this little um, file icon here and then we want to go new and this will give us a it will generate a title for us and then if you press this little button here it will generate a new title or the best thing we can do is just to tap on it like this and we'll just call this um, uh, uh, getting started getting started started we could call it on oh, getting started I've called as I'm getting started and I'll just press OK OK so and then it will take you to this screen and this screen is where you can choose which gadget now it's dependent on what other core gaps you might own or or you've purchased for gadgets but you'll have you'll have you'll have gadgets in there so OK so you can choose from several gadgets. However, what we're going to do first is not do that. We're going to, I'm just going to try and get the screen a little bit darker as well so you can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to press cancel here. And then we've got this getting started, which is our title. It's given us one scene. OK, so we can even delete that. If we look at this down the bottom, this function button, this is really important. This gives you access to all sorts of cool stuff you can do with your scenes and tracks, as you will see. Well, if I hit function, you'll say I have the option to duplicate this, insert another one, or delete. And we can delete all of them. And then we can just have a look at what's going on on the actual screen. So the, like I says, the file icon here, this is where you would start a new project open an existing project, import a project, save a project, save a project as. So, you know, at the moment, this is called getting started, but we could change that, but that's okay. And then export. So when you've finished your project, right, you hit export and you can choose like a gadget cloud, iTunes, Dropbox, audio copy, audio share, uh, Ableton Live, or a standard MIDI file. Now there's nothing to export, but if you chose like audio share, you can export all the separate stems. Hi Jade, all the separate stems, um, with the master track, whatever you like. Okay, so that's basically it. So what? Going further over here, this this little button with the uh, arrow up and down. This opens up the mixer. Okay, so when you have like loads of stuff in here. You'll have a, a, a big bank of uh, gadgets in here and you can mix them and add effects and stuff. Then you have your settings, uh, so you can have Bluetooth settings. MIDI input easy and advanced. Make sure it's on easy to start with. Uh, advanced will do something else and it can get quite confusing. MIDI sync, we're using internal, uh, not external. Ableton link is disabled. You can enable it if you want to. Transport, you can MIDI learn the transport. We're not going to do that today. We've got note preview enabled. That means when I add a note into the MIDI sequencer by hand, we'll hear that note being played. Dropbox is unlinked. And if you open other settings, it takes you to the general iPad settings for gadget. Okay. And then here is just a manual help center and bug report. So if you find a bug, you can go and uh, report it. Right. The second one here, this like world thing here, this lets you listen to other people's uh, music uh, and uh, stuff that uh, they've done on Gadget. Okay, so we can go back. 
information is just information about gadgets a product page it'll take you to the Korg newsletter you want to subscribe Korg on Facebook etc and other Korg apps that are available to buy and that's that so the, the the things you need to do are start a new project and then when you're presented with that scene where you can add all the gadgets you can either choose a gadget if you know what you're doing or you know what you want to do right or just um you know pick pick a new one anyway right let's do this let's where it says scene just below here let's hit the little plus button and this will give us a new scene okay and if we hit function now we can go in and adjust our scene parameters now the reason i'm showing you this with just one scene and nothing else is when you have a full screen of stuff and you open this it, it looks it looks like there's an awful lot going on and really it's not it's not so bad you know you just need to understand it once for the scenes and once for the tracks and you'll you'll understand it all so function will open up uh, a menu like this just tap on it and it gets you all the other information you might need so it's scenes run across the top like this horizontally tracks run is that right yeah tracks run vertically like this so we are in a scene Okay, so function, tap, and it gives us our, our like scene parameters, stuff we can do. Okay, so what we want to do is call this uh, intro, for want of a better thing, because it's an introduction to a scene. Press enter, and that will be called intro when we go away from now. Here's where you can set the time signature per scene. Okay, so you can have a different time signature for each scene you can have a different tempo like at the moment if i enable it the scene tempo is 128 which is the tempo that's set down here but each scene can have a different tempo and each scene can uh, tempo ramp from one scene to another and then you can fade in a scene and fade out a scene so you might want to fade in the very first scene and then miles down the road later fade out the last one we're not going to worry about that too much at the moment you also have this i'm going to disable the scene tempo you also have a repeat that that is how many times that this scene will repeat before it goes to the next scene that we set up and i'll show you that as well so at the moment we'll leave it on repeat once and time signature four four we've renamed the intro We've disabled the scene tempo because our, our global tempo is 128 anyway, which we're going to stick with. And then we've, we don't need to worry about fade in or fade out. Once you've set up this, all you need to do is hit function again and you're away. And you'll see it's called intro. Now we're ready to add some gadgets in, some uh, things to make music with. To do this, you tap the little plus button here that's at the bottom that's next to master. Okay. You don't need to worry about the tempo and things like that or anything or the transport controls they're kind of self-explanatory right okay so we're going to tap on this and it will take us back to this this kind of page where you have all the gadgets that are available for you to use inside called gadget you can choose different view you can choose a list view and it gives tells you a little bit about what it is or you can choose by category so the easiest way to do this and to show you what's available if you choose synth here's all your synths there's more synths than anything else if you choose drum here are all your drum machines or things that will make drum sounds okay if you choose keyboards this is things like pianos organs strings kind of samples stuff like that you know anything that's kind of keyboardy and not kind of generally synthy audio tracks allow you to record external audio in so you have one called zurich which is kind of like if you wanted to sing in or stuff like this uh you've got one called rosario which is basically a, a guitar processor so you can plug a guitar in record guitar in up to 16 bars and Durban, which is also uh, for bass guitar we don't need to worry about that let's start with the most obvious thing here let's start with drum and let's start with we we'll just add a gladstone because gladstone is the acoustic drum gadget so you'll see it appeared in the um bottom of the screen here next to master if we tap on it now it will open it up 
and you can sample the various pads that are assigned to uh, the various sounds that are assigned to each pad you can change each sound here you can just choose a different kick or a different sound for each pad and these controls here are all dependent on on which drum so if you see the levels the, the dry level and the panning will change so these controls where it says sound are all the are all just to manipulate each individual sound if you want to get a better view if you double tap on it like this it will expand it to full screen so it might be double tap on it again this button here that you'll see in the corner of the drum machines and this is in all the drum machines you tap on that and this gives you predefined beats that you can actually just record in by pressing this and moving it around and there's lots to choose from you've got like say break beat so if we do that now um, and the further on down the further on down you are the less complex it will be the further you move up You'll actually, that will actually record in as you're recording. So double tap on it again to uh, take this away. This here uh, opens a mixer control for Gladstone. Now, if you close this like this, you see the actual MIDI page. And you can, so you know, you can hear each note. You can preview each sound. In the MIDI controller and then just by tapping it you can put four beats in and if you press play maybe and this is because we can tap them again to remove them or you can just literally arm record now we're only going over one bar so at the moment we haven't adjusted anything else at all so we've got one bar it's you can see it says one bar at the top there if we arm record and then press play if we make sure our metronome is switched on so you tap on tempo and that gives you the tap tempo the swing and the ability to switch the metronome on and off quantize now if you're not inside you'll see it's disappeared there is no quantize on the main page okay none you'll see it's flashing red because record is armed so you'll know that record is armed if it's flashing red at the top somewhere, right? Tap, watch what happens, you get more controls. So quantize is switched on and you get solo or mute. You can quantize every single uh, gadget independently. Okay, so you, you, you don't, say if I was doing a synth solo, just turn quantize off, but it's not gonna turn quantize off for the drum machine if that's switched on. So to record with the pads is again super simple. You just we know our record is armed. We can press play and it'll give us a four bar counting. Stop the metronome. Stop arm record. okay and there's the MIDI information that we've just recorded in for that track okay let's go back up there so we can see the image and then let's go back okay so there's our little drum pattern okay one bar long you know what I wanted to show you as well is if you open this up now you'll see the mixer and you can also do this if you tap on the Gladstone icon You'll see it opens up Gladstone, but it also gives you the mixer there and you can add internal effects. It's exactly the same as this here. So if you wanted to add some extra effects to it, you hit IFX here and then you hit the edit, the tap on the button above and you can add up to five effects per gadget if you like. And you, it's Korg's internal effects. You can't use external effects, but it's Korg's internal effects. 
you tap on there and then you can choose between well, like, let's put reverb on there just so you can hear it and then we could press play and then you can go in and edit that reverb or you could just turn it off or go with no effect so that's how you add effects and then you just hit IFX again it will take you back there so also as well at the moment I, I have my MIDI MIDI keyboard connected although you can't see it gadget will just automatically recognize your MIDI controller so you see where it says MIDI if we switch that off so if you're ever not getting any sound and you think, oh no, you may have accidentally switched MIDI off, so just make sure it's... And it's, it will select, automatically select pair gadgets. So when, before, when we load another one on, you'll see that the MIDI, the highlighted MIDI will swap to the next gadget. Okay, so... Okay, so let's make this lower so you're concentrating. We want to be looking at this now. This is the track information. Function. Now you've got another thing next to this. I'm gonna clear out that MIDI data that I've just recorded in, hit clear and it'll go sure, and then that will be empty. No more information. Now this is where the fun stuff starts, right? You see it says one bar, clear, mute, copy. Let's just tap on where it says one bar. And this opens up the parameter controls for each of the actual tracks. So these are scenes these are tracks and this is our this is our first track in our first scene at the moment it's set to one bar you can see you can have it go up to 16 let's set it at four and now you'll see that's changed to four bars there so if we go one and it'll change it to four bars and if we quickly come out of there you might be able to see that it's expanded the view and if i press play it'll track along and it will take four bars before it repeats itself okay so and it repeats itself again each track can have its own independent length so you don't need to have four bars but there is something that's important to know that the scene will run for the longest track so if this track is four bars and the next track is only one bar the scene will run for four for four bars and the instrument in track one will just repeat itself four times again i'll show you this in just a sec so anyway there's track one let's go back to function again let's open it up you can choose one shot or loop if it's on loop right it will do what that drum machine was just doing it was just, it will just continue to play 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 if it's on one shot it will play once until that scene is triggered again at some later point okay then you have mute, self-explanatory, mute it, mutes it. And then you have your grid. Now this is your quantization settings. Okay, so you remember when we open our, our Gladstone instrument there, we get a quantize. Well, it's related to this grid here. So each independent track can have its own grid reference as well. Okay, most of the time I leave it on 116th, as I guess most people do, but you can go deeper, 132nd, 164th, have it, have no quantization at all. It's basically the same as turning quantize off on the instrument. And then you can quantize in triplets as well. So yeah, that's, that's basically that. So you can set your bars up to one to 16, have them loop or one shot, which again, I'll show you in a sec. In fact, I'll show you now. So now we have four bars let's record a pattern over four bars okay so it's, it's nice because we can go into our pattern screen and it'll show us the bars as it's counting through don't forget if we arm record let's switch our metronome on because we want to hear it we want to quantize on because it's a drum machine and uh yeah let's just do this let's so let's press play and record four bars of stuff So now, as long as it's recording, you can jump in an overdub. And that's cool. If you've made 
we can stop stop the metronome switch record off if you need if you've made any mistakes you can go in and just you know expand move move it back if it was a, a synth note you know you can expand it but it's not okay right I'm gonna quickly touch on the rest of this stuff now right if we tap on here now here's where you can control all sorts of automation well automation but your velocity your tuning so your velocity and then you've got tune decay pan all all sorts of other stuff sends etc this is getting a bit advanced so you don't really need to be worrying about all this stuff but it's there if you want to do it you know so here's we've got our our first track it's our it's our first scene if you like it's a scene let's add another gadget so let's add some bass and let's use madrid i'm looking for like synth that's not going to be in synth is it keyboard maybe madrid and madrid is like um if you ever can't see it when you go to the midi page by the way just tap this and it'll open the instrument back up so this is like a bass synth uh, it's like an acoustic uh you know an electric guitar there's lots of instruments and stuff that's effects but you can go in here and change it and this is the same for all gadgets all gadgets have a, a preset browser built in you can various controls that you can mess with Now, you'll see that because we've added another track, it's copied the actual length of this one into this one, but you may not need four bars of bass. You may want to not play the same bass thing for four bars. So what you can do is, like I said, you can independently change the length of each independent tr track in a scene. So if we choose four bars, now we go to say, like, let's use two bars for this one. Okay. Let's come off function and you'll, you, you might be able to see that the actual grid reference on the actual screen has changed as well. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but it, it's it's like further apart than this one is. So if we pr press play and record now, we can record a, a, a bass for two bars. So and then, uh, so let's see. Oh, and the other thing as well, if we open up our mixer, you'll see that our MIDI, our MIDI focus is now on Madrid as well. So I don't need to have it open to... to have it open so, so I'm just going to record some bass so and that's done but now this is where we need to pay attention you'll notice the track one is twice the length of track two Okay, now watch what happens. I'm going to duplicate this scene so we can plus a scene and it'll just add a, a new blank scene, but it will copy the same parameters as those, the gr same grid parameters. We can hit function and delete that one. Or we can duplicate this scene, which is probably a good idea. So I'm just going to hit duplicate and it does a copy for us. And I'm going to go into... Um, into the function here and tap on here and change this to intro two because it at the moment it just says intro copy and then we can just enter that it's fine and then we can come out and it's intro two now you'll see also as well that there is a little looping which means that when that gets to the end it'll just continually loop Okay, 
if we wanted to move to our next our next scene here so from this one to this one of course at the moment these are identical but if we want to go from this scene to this scene switch loop off pick the scene you want to start on and you you'll, you'll need to you need to see what happens because it, it will take four bars for it to swap scene although track two is only two bars long because the the longest track the longest track dictates the length of the scene before it changes that's one of the things you need to remember so you'll, you'll see it now it'll swap but when it gets to not now swap now and when it gets to the end of this because there's no loop it will just stop and it will jump back to scene one Okay, so that, that's it. another thing to remember. Now, here's another cool thing, right? Let's do this. Let's add another gadget. And uh, I'd, let's add some more. Let's add another drum. So I'm going to go to drum. I'm going to add a, um, I don't know. I, I'll add a London. I don't know. I just want to open it up and I'm just going to add some. Some of those clap sounds so I need to make also as well if you're when you want to make some adjustments maybe you don't want this to be four bars long so see where it starts to get a bit much if you kind of jump in straight away without going through the very basics at the very beginning if we open up this we've got four bars on there but we don't really need it on four bars so we could go in and change it to say uh let's change it to two bars for a moment however if we go into the gadget the london gadget and we press function we can we can do we can still do the same thing here right we can change this to say two bars we can also start to look at the uh, assignable midi cc's again i don't want to get too far off that because you know it's it'll just start to get confusing but you know you do have other options once you go into an actual instrument as well for midi and stuff like that so if we go back if we press function now you'll see that we've got two bars on there well actually i only need one bar so i'm just going to go in and change this to one bar okay so I've got one bar. I'm going to switch loop off so it jumps to this one. I'm going to switch loop back on so it'll just continue to loop, but we're on one bar, right? So we can go into our car. Let's work out. Let's just... Fine. I'm just going to hit record. I don't need the metronome switched on because I've got a drum pad to play with. I need it for one bar so it saves me recording it four times switch record off and go back okay now here's 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 another thing maybe you want your intro to be longer than it actually is so you know you need to hit function again and go into the actual settings here to so press where it says four bar four one and where it says repeat you can then choose how many times that that particular scene will repeat before it goes to the next scene and bearing in mind the scene will last as long as your longest loop so for instance let's choose two repeats for this let's exit this and watch what happens now we'll turn we'll turn our uh, quantize off and we'll press play but watch how this this track out now works slightly differently See, it's running slower half the speed because we've got it repeating twice So I um, like I how I like to work is to duplicate the previous scene that I've got and then I'll add another gadget. Now you can of course add as many gadgets as you want for one scene. As many as your device will handle and trust me it'll be a lot. 
because it's really efficient. Um, let's add another one now. So let's add, say, uh, let's go to a keyboard again and let's add uh, this Ale Alexandria organ sound. And now if we look, I'm still focused on MIDI. If I choose this, I'm on the organ patch. Uh, Maybe we need that organ to be a little bit louder at some point. So what we could do is go into the effects, choose a compressor, go to edit. Drive up the gain a little bit. And that'll give us more control over our actual mix as well. And then you have pan controls, of course. This is Reverb Send, which is based off this master reverb here. So you have a Reverb Send. You also have a Maximizer thing as well. But well, that's it for another video. We can get into that. So anyway, we've got another gadget added. We don't need to see that full screen. And we can see that it's copied the information from all the other ones, which is four bars. Now I'm going to just change this one to, um, I'm going to do, I'll show you something else cool in a sec as well. I'm going to go in here and where it says intro to copy, I'm going to call this maybe, um, I'll just call it verse, but you can call it whatever you like, you know what I mean? But it's not really a verse, but if you come out of here now, you'll see we've got intro, intro to, and then verse. We know our MIDI focuses on our organ here. But it will focus on whatever's open. So if we open it like that, or we open Alexandria. So now we can do a bit of uh, a bit of practicing, I suppose. Let's see what we could uh, play. So let's play our track. Let's do this. Let's play it from there. So from anywhere you want. Now, if it's running, what will happen is this. If you want to change it, like yeah, that will flash to show that it's, it's queued up. I can either jump in and record anytime I want. I don't need to stop it and do a counting. So in, if I wanted to do a count, I'd do it like this. Or we can just go in, stop record and clear this, okay? <clears throat> and then I can just hit record and it's it's recording have other options as well for each of these if we hit function you'll see we've got a copy as soon as we hit copy like this it'll change the options to paste so you can actually paste the MIDI data anywhere else you want so if we wanted to paste it there we would just do there like this and then we could go like this and you'll see our MIDI data has been pasted in for the first the first one but we don't really want that there do we clear but the idea is that you can you can copy and, copy and paste the MIDI data anywhere you want or all of the time. Here's another cool thing, right? 
So we've got our scenes and we've named our scene intro, intro to and first. Now, this is something I never ever use, but I thought I'll show you it anyway because it, you know, it, it will be useful for some people. Our, our Gladstone is our drums here. We've got our, our bass here. We've got some more drums here. We've got an organ here. Let's, if you see where it says track one, track two, track three, track four. If we hold on like that, if we hold, you'll see that you'll get, see, right, let's see if you can see. Let's see if I can see like that. You'll get some other options. If you let go, it'll go away. But you hold on like this and we'll go, oh, well, just move it down drum and you'll see track one is drum. Track two, a little bass, like that, okay. Um, track four, that, that's well, that's some more drums. So let's go with uh, a drum again. Uh, and track four is an organ. So we're going to do this, and I'm going to go edit and call this uh, organ, and then just go save. And you, so you, so now you've got like you can rename your intro. You can rename your your scenes. You can rename your uh, instruments across the top here so it makes more sense if you're looking at it because if you've got a great big project and you want to keep coming back to it now here's the key right save lots and lots because if you come out of gadget and come back in your scene will still be there however if you load in high vortex hi fam um if you load in another scene if you load in another track right uh, and then try to get your track back it won't be there you'll have you'll have wrecked it so you know you just make sure that you save your stuff regularly and i'll show you something as well also as well now we have export these are all now lit up and say we wanted to export to audio share okay maybe we do here we go there's our four tracks track one drum track two bass track three drum track four organ with our names we've got a tail of 500 milliseconds which is just the end of what is happening or you can export the master track so if i tap on any of these it will export uh that particular stem and then so that way you can open up your all your stems in any other door you like and what happens is each stem will be as long as the track okay so as long as the track so you you don't need to worry about ordering those stems in any particular way they will just open up correctly in whatever daw put them in so it's fine anyway right so there you go so that that is we've got this far so far now i don't really know i don't really want to go much further because then it gets complicated um <coughs> i will show you one more thing before we go i will add uh two more gadgets i will add uh, a darwin which is like an iron one and i'll add uh, a fairbanks so we've just added two more gadgets here if we look at our thing and select our midi there's our darwin and if we look at the fairbanks let's go into fairbanks by tapping on it and let's change the sound to say like a uh, maybe a uh, strings or a choir maybe analog winter choir okay so that's fine let's go back now and then we have that sound there now here's here's another thing right what we're going to do i'm going to drop that down i'm just going to create a new scene but a blank scene that has nothing to do with anything else okay i'm going to change the oh, good a blank scene so i'm going to play this scene and i'm going to switch from metronome on and you'll see because it's a brand new scene every single bar is four that's why i like to copy kind of thing and it keeps my um it keeps my um thing in kind of logical manner that i've had set up doesn't matter what we're going to do is for this we're going to go function actually now i'm going to leave it on one bar for the drums i'm going to open gladstone here and just record one bar of a, a kick so I'm just, in fact, actually, let's just put that in via MIDI, shall we? So we can drop this down. Done, done deal. Super simples. 
turn that off. Let's give it a little bit of volume. Now, say for instance, now I want to record, I want to stack them instruments together. I need to get, I want them both playing at the same time. I want to, I want that Darwin, this here. Let me just open it. Right. I want that and I want this to play at the same time. I want to record them at the same time, right? Here's how you do that, okay? You then go into settings here and you see where it says MIDI, you go to advanced. And this is where you can choose, if we go like the instruments, um, let me just see, how, can I see if I can remember how to do this. You'll see everything will play. Choose mute and solo. And choose solo for the drums. So there you go. Now you've got like a, a stacked instrument. So that's nice if you want to record like super massive pad sounds. Just then, don't forget to go back into MIDI. Go back to easy. I know this is where you probably wouldn't want to do this at this level. I hardly ever use that. To be fair, what I would do normally is just copy. I would record this. All right, let's take solo off everything. All right. So here's another way you can do it. It is. It's actually easier for you than having to mess around with going into advanced MIDI. If we close this down again, and I'm going to set this to play, I'll set, I'll change this to a couple of maybe four, four bars, and I'll also change this to four bars as well because that's probably what I'll want. So four bars in the last two. But you see how this starts to look a little bit busy, what's going on, um, if I didn't start from the very, very beginning like I did. Right, so, so we've got Darwin, so I'm going to just hit record and pick it up on the next time round. Oh, hang on a minute. This time, so... See, I made a mistake there. I'll just clear that. And that was a mistake I've made. So, um, is it there? Clear that one. Right. So this, I want to be make sure I'm selected on this when I record. So. stop it now stop record now all you need to do is hit function copy and paste and it'll paste the MIDI data in for you for Fairbanks as well and then we could like sp split them And that basically is how you how you actually get going. And then you can just carry on. Oh look, we could change the titles of these now. We could go maybe I don't know um, pad on this one and pad on that one. And we could go in and and, and, and just call this I don't know. Um, let's call it bridge. And 
and exit there now. So now we've got intro, intro to verse, bridge, and the whole thing together, making sure that loop is switched off. Start from intro. That makes no sense whatsoever with that, but just it was just a point. Now, of course, because Gadget is running MIDI, okay. So I mean you can freeze in gadgets. If you if it's if it's overloading, there is an option to actually you, you can kind of freeze the track. So I did that in another video, how to freeze tracks and all the rest of it. But right. Um I can't remember how you blink can do it now neither. Never mind, it doesn't matter. Um, what was I going to say? Um, I think that's more or less it. Um, of course, because it's MIDI, you can go and change the sound anytime you like. So if you're playing, say, for instance, this, this line here. Go in and go like, oh, okay, well. Like I said before, the double tapping works for the synth gadgets as well. That will expand them to full screen. Uh, okay, so and and don't forget the other thing I showed you about the drums and having their all the all the drum modules have their own patterns. I'll quickly show you that as well before I go. Again, um, because it's one of the fun things as well, and I'll show you how how it actually records in as well. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, so maybe you didn't like the bass neither. So. Same with the drums, of course. Now I could actually record these fills in. I've got my record switched on. It's recorded all your all that new MIDI data in. <laughs> Basically, guys, that is the very basics of, of Gadget. Of course, it can get as complicated as you like, playing-wise, and what you're recording. But that's the basic. That's the basic building blocks. That's how it works. So if you if you kind of jumped in halfway through, if you go back to the very beginning of this video at some point, you'll get um, a, a lot of information right from right from the screen being completely completely blank. And like I said, all you need to do is keep, just just keep adding gadgets. Uh, like I said, the actual category search is quite handy because it goes, what am I looking for? Am I looking for the synth? Maybe I'm looking for what what kind of vibe am I, you know? And then you can just have a mess around or drums. What drums am I looking for sort of thing? And um, you've got kind of loads of uh, R&B, hip hop stuff and kind of all this cool trap stuff going on. It's kind of everything um but yeah and then like i said at the be at the beginning we could like you can fade in as well so if we had this intro here like our intro one press function 
right and we go to this and we go oh look fade in disable let's enable the fade in and let's if it will what will happen if it's on a hundred percent it will fade in over the length of over of its bar so let's let's have this at say maybe 77 percent okay so let's see what happens let's go back here Okay, so we just created a fade in. And again. If we go to this last one here, this one, let's create a fade out. And let's have that fade out 100% over the, over the entire length of this thing. So like this so we go from the we'll take off this we'll go from the first track And then that's how you create a fade out. So kind of good idea fading at the beginning somewhere or, or wherever you like. But, you know, the point is that that's how you do it. You have to go, you go into function. This is your your friend. Function is your friend for everything. It's very, very cool. Anyway, guys, bless you all. Thank you very, very much for joining me this afternoon in the UK where we took a look at literally just a very, very ultimate, the ultimate beginning, the very basics just to get you going because i still know that some people still i kind of kind of find it a bit weird that the scenes run this way and the tracks run this way slightly differently in, than in a normal door but you know there you go anyway um yeah so that's that um <clears throat> uh, this evening i will be carrying on with my um I know England are playing, but some people aren't from England, so they're not going to be bothered about watching the footy and they can watch my video afterwards if they want to um so i am doing cubasis 3 and uh, synth master 2 carrying on with my tangerine dream project i've already added a few extra bits so it won't be super boring for you and then uh, yeah the fact the fade that's very cool it, it, this, you can it's not only that you can also change the change the tempo so for instance we before we go look, look let's choose this one here right and it's a scene tempo this i'm going to switch that on and i'm going to have this go bonkers I'm going to have this go to 166.2 BPM. I'm going to leave smoothing off because smoothing off will. And what will happen now is if we go from scene two. And then it'll go back to normal 128 and fade out, of course. So there are lots of lots of very cool stuff you can do with gadget. There are a kind of just beyond the normal thing, but if you under, if you have a basic understanding of how it works, when you start to make a track for the first time, a it will be a lot more enjoyable the experience because. You won't be worrying so much about what Gadget's doing as with the music you're making. Uh, so, you know. Anyway, guys, I will give you... I will I will open up a bigger project and play that before before I... Uh, <coughs> before I go, uh, while you say ta to each other. So, let's save this. Saving is important. Okay. And let's open... And I'll open a... I'll open this track called years later they returned which was one of mine from a while ago which gives you an idea of the kind of it's not too it's not too lot maybe i'd know not this one i don't want that one maybe um spirit guide was it the spirit guide maybe i'll just play the spirit guide anyway
from the beginning while you say to that to each other. Thanks very much, guys, for joining us. And uh, I will see you later. Ciao.